Hey right, guys, good uh, good evening. The Earthmaster here on the live stream with the update video. It is uh, Thursday, November or uh, December 9th, 2021, about 6:25 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the globe, earthquake 3D globe, looks to be a 2.5 earthquake into the northern California region. Seeing a little little bit of uh, earthquake activity ramping up in this area of northern California. Of course, activity picking up, uh, continuing off the coast of Oregon as well. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information here from the uh, USGS showing that 2.5 earthquake. Uh, this earthquake, a little series of swarm, swarming activity right underneath Lake Almanor outside of Chester. Beautiful lake. Of course, they had a uh, devastating fire around the region uh, and unfortunately hit Greenville pretty hard. Pretty devastating scenes in that region of the state. Uh, but a 2.5 and a little series of earthquakes happening right around the Lake Almanor area. It looks like about uh, 5.3 kilometers or so below the surface for that uh, 2.5. Up here in the Northern California region, some older earthquake activity at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Once again, that uh, was some older activity, but there is a one little earthquake here kind of popping out here at me. It's a uh, 1.7 off the coast of Oregon around the Cascadia Megathrust area, directly on it. If you want to call it uh, a bullseye hit for this 1.7, struck at about 8.2 kilometers down dip of the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, this little earthquake activity, kind of a, a sign of uh, increasing pressure in the southern end of the Cascadia. That's uh, something I've been kind of watching pretty closely with the uh, sequence of earthquakes off the coast. Oregon around the Blanco fracture zone I uh, did have a uh, couple folks asking me if this is potentially uh, volcanic in nature and I don't believe that is the case unless there's some type of new volcano uh, happening that may be forming out there which I don't think that's the case there uh, there is a seamount to the north uh, it's axial seamount underwater type volcano but I believe it's well to the north here I wanted to pull up a uh, Google Earth view of that. See if I can get that to uh, pop up here. Possibly, there we go. Uh, through the uh, Google Earth program, the uh, Axial Seamount. The movement that we're seeing on the uh, Blanco Fracture Zone is right about here. And you can see specifically, there's not a whole lot of uh, at least volcanic signatures in there. There is uh, well, obviously some uh, interesting little rivers that it looks like under around the Blanco fracture zone but the sea mount the one I'm talking about the uh, water the uh, underwater under the ocean volcano is up here well to the north and I don't see we didn't see any uh, activity specifically around this area uh, but it's uh, I believe firmly this is purely plate uh, tectonic action here with all the uh, swarming activity kicking off there off the coast of Oregon. It's pretty cool to look at. Uh, some major fractures out there in the ocean floor, but it gives you the well-defined areas to look at uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, Pacific Plate and uh, all the uh, features and whatnot it has to offer here, uh, especially around the uh, earthquake activity swarm that we're seeing right now. So let's get back over to the uh, uh, map here. So I don't, like I say, looking at this map, it doesn't look like it's anywhere around that uh, uh, volcano to the north but we are continuing uh, latest quake was about uh, let's see what do we got here what is the uh, looks like a couple hours ago is when we had that latest 3.8 earthquake uh, we did have a 5.4 uh, and a 5.2 earlier this afternoon there's that 1.7 which is kind of say just off the coast right around the Cascadia Megathrust fold belt and thrust belt that doesn't sound uh, scary does it so kind of keeping it keep an eye on the west coast still folks I don't believe we're out of the woods yet we haven't seen any further significant movement here to the west yes a swarm of activity in a arrow type fashion here through the Indonesia Philippines area stretching up towards just south of Japan uh, all this er earthquake activity light to moderate in terms of what this area could see and what it uh, potentially will see here eventually uh, with all the forward movement kind of stopping at this area right here. Hawaii out in the Pacific 
kind of lighten up out, out here in the last hour. A little earthquake activity north of the Big Island, it looks like, just offshore. Seeing a 2.3, which is uh, well off the island and uh, well north of Mauna Kea. 10 kilometers for that earthquake. Also uh, down here at southeast flank, some further activity. A little earthquake south of Loihi Sea Mountain as well, underwater volcano. Nothing significant uh, to take note of at the moment. Just kind of keep an eye on that uh, region. Also out here into Northern California, of course, we had the activity around the Lake Almanor area. We did see some further movement around Shasta Lake, north of Redding, 1.8 and uh, 1.7, 15 kilometers deep. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer activity real quick. See about the, uh, I was reading a little bit of information about the uh, that sea mount there on, along the uh, Blanco Fracture Zone. It's a pretty cool article. Wikipedia put it out uh, if you want to check it out yourself. It's uh, definitely a pretty cool read and uh, some interesting uh, information on that. Okay, so let's go back over here to the uh, trimmer activity map with the PNSN. And trimmer activity has really ramped up into the southern Oregon region here. You can see that activity uh, looking at about 185 epicenters of trimmer. That's a pretty significant increase. Uh, and of course, with all this activity, folks, you got to remember a lot of people, and I keep saying, I hate to keep saying it, but the activity that we're seeing off, off the uh, coast here uh, is obviously a different type of setup when it comes to the Cascadia, right? Cascadia, uh, a subduction zone type area. This here, of course, you got left to right movement. Uh, but in this case here, when you get all this earthquake activity, we're looking at a kind of a downward pressure gradient in this region, adding more stress onto the southern end of the Cascadia. And I believe that's what we're seeing there with the further stress. We're getting uh, some, some push, some shove down there, creating that trimmer activity that we're seeing over, over the day today. 185 epicenters of trimmer. It's been awfully quiet in the trimmer department for about three weeks. Only uh, maybe six here, seven there every other day. Not even that. So uh, this activity highly contributed to the activity along the Blanco Fracture Zone, the Juan de Fuca Plate interaction here with the Pacific Plate. Of course, that area called the Cascadia Subduction Zone. That's a pretty significant number there, 185 epicenters uh, for this. So take note of this. Watch this pretty closely here. I'm still keeping up a... Uh, an earthquake watch for the west coast cascadia subduction zone there's just too much activity continuing uh along the west coast to ignore uh what do we got else here up north around the cascade volcanoes pretty quiet not a whole lot of movement one little microquake outside of mount rainier uh, eastern washington looks pretty quiet as well no deeper movement around the seattle uh, seattle fault system little activity stretching through the Yellowstone area, but uh, nothing significant at the moment. Let's see what we got here along the eastern crest. Things down here even pretty calm, uh, far as the potential of what it could be. Looking uh, just like a couple of microquakes throughout the region of the eastern Sierra Nevadas and around the Tonopah, Nevada area. Some quarry blast right along the Garlock Fault structure, right, right at the intersection of most of the Garlock Fault and the San Andreas Fault. That's a great way to uh, kickstart a major earthquake, right? Uh, there's the earthquake from last night, that 3.5. We haven't seen any further movement down in that region yet. Uh, a little earthquake activity along the El Ellensnor Fault. 1.2. Overall, general activity pretty quiet in this region. Uh, really no swarming. A little, little bit, I guess you can call that a little bit of a swarming here. Outside of uh, Heber, Heber, El Centro area, California, north of the border. Some microquakes kicking up there. There's the Gulf of California earthquake activity earlier, 4.6. Kind of odd, shortly after that, we've seen the earthquake activity ramp up once again in the Oregon area just off the coast there in the Blanco Fracture Zone. If you recall, before this even started, we had a series of swarms down here in the Gulf of California. Kind of worked its way up north there with the whole plate dynamic system at work and that's when we've seen the swarm kick off so um, I, I can't say this is over by a long shot yet there's too much activity pointing towards further movement 
just by looking at the maps here and the trimmer department indicating that further pressure along the west coast and more specifically the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, movement along the Puerto Rico Trench here, another player in producing signif significant earthquakes, well, in the future. Uh, 4.2, 51 kilometers into the Puerto Rico Trench here, pretty deep earthquake. Some movement also southeast here off the Puerto Rico Island, a little bit larger one, 4.2. Normally we see uh, some twos and threes here, but that's kind of a little bit larger over the last 24 hours. Uh, down into the South America region where it has remained relatively quiet, 4.8 in Colombia and also a deep earthquake into to the uh, Peru Chile Trench, 4.3 Santa Rosa, Peru. Other than that, things are very quiet once again into the South America range or South America region, I should say. The Aleutian Islands, a couple earthquakes out there along the uh, North American Pacific Plate subduction zone here. Uh, looks like a couple at least one subduction zone quake, that 4.2 striking at uh, 35 kilometers. And activity along this stretch here of the Pacific Ring of Fire remains quiet for the most part, but uh, I'm still kind of waiting on some further large scale movement over here to uh, kind of adjust this Pacific plate and the North American plate here a little bit, uh, possibly relieve some stress out here along the West Coast. Uh, Pecos, Texas, and areas to the north, Oklahoma, still seeing some activity, including around the uh, Salina area again, where we've seen a 2.6 strike up within the last hour. This region here has seen some movement over the last week, including a 4.3, which was felt pretty broadly throughout the area in the Kansas region. New Madrid zone, awfully quiet here tonight. Eastern coast looks pretty quiet as well. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone maps as we uh, zip over there. Looks like uh, the activity uh, off the coast of Oregon still showing up when it comes to the five magnitudes. There, Maple Creek, uh, uh, generally the whole area of Yellowstone will pick up those uh, distant earthquakes. Some microquakes kicking up here as well. Looks like uh, at least a handful of them, maybe a dozen or so small, very small earthquakes at uh, the northwest area, it looks like, of um, Yellowstone National Park, just outside of the uh, caldera. This region down, well, let me see what we got here. This activity, I'm, I'm going to have to reset my computer. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah, those got to be the, uh, those looks like those fives that are off the coast of Oregon. Just a little bit more well-defined on those stations down there in the south are a little bit more amplified when it comes to picking up the uh, seismic activity there off the uh, Oregon coast. Sunspot activity continues to dwindle down to completely nothing. In fact, the sunspot uh, count looks to be an absolute zero. That's, uh, it's, it sucks. <laughs> I like to see the sunspot activity kick up and it's just not looking that way. It's looking pretty boring right now. No coronal holes either facing us. One up to the north, one a couple down to the south, but nothing significant. Uh, and that will, of course, um, not, it definitely won't elevate anything. Things are looking pretty quiet when it comes to uh, the three-day forecast of geomagnetic storming. Not a, not a huge chance of uh, any type of auroras happening up north. Sea flare down. I haven't seen this in, in quite a while. Sea flare threat down to a 1%. It's about as low as you can go there for the uh, even the sea flare. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, like I say, things are continuing to stay very active out here along the West Coast and uh, the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. It's uh, definitely something to watch pretty closely and just be prepared about. I don't think this is over yet. Uh, West Coast pressure trimmer activity continues to point towards uh, impending uh, continued pressure. So just be on guard. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Thanks for checking in, everyone.